Welcome to No Borders with Brian and Carrie. One of the things we want to talk about and what we're going to discuss today is we have traveled now for two and a half years, going over that actually, and we have been to a lot of places that we feel are very underrated yeah, and yeah, just not on people's radar. Uh, but then we've also traveled to a lot of areas that are very much overrated, we feel. Right. And, and we do know this is our opinion. <laughs> yeah, this is our opinion and we'll, we'll get some... Uh, We'll get some feedback mm -hmm. on, on some of our, our uh, overrated destinations, right. but that's, um, okay. let's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the underrated destinations right. just so we can like ease into this a little bit. <laughs> and, yes. um, uh, you know, some of these destinations um, I was excited to go to just because I'm always excited to, to travel wherever. wherever. Um, but once I got there, um, I felt, why doesn't anybody else come here? Right. You yeah. Know? And, and to me, um, I'm glad that not everybody goes to that destination because we've been to other places mm -hmm. where everybody does go. And uh, it takes a little bit of the, um, I don't know, the, the atmosphere just isn't the same. Right. Now, um, let's, start, let's start with, our, our, I think, our number one choice. But yeah, was, for the underrated. For the yeah. underrated was, was Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, we found Vietnam amazing. It was amazing. And you know, it's just kind of one of those places that's not quite a tourist destination that people don't, uh, which is, this isn't everybody, I get that, but right. for the majority, the masses, right? They're planning a vacation and they don't go, where do you want to go? Let's right. go to Vietnam. You know, and most people are, let's go to Thailand or let's go to, you know, Hawaii, when thinking, Mexico. Right. You know, I know my friends were like, oh, Vietnam, wow, that's. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, it, it, not really. It's not. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is that the value you get for your money in Vietnam well, is incredible. It was one of the cheapest locations that, not cheap, we hate to say that word, but it was the most affordable yeah. place that we have traveled to um, for the accommodations you got were amazing. Um, and the beaches were incredible. I mean, the, you got the least expensive beaches mm -hmm. we've ever been to. Right. Right. So you get that complete yeah. tropical vibe, amazing food, <laughs> and all at a very, very affordable price. Right. Uh, so I'm, it's kind of a surprising one for us that it's not going up higher on people's list of places to go to. Well, it's because it's underrated. It is underrated. People don't think of it, <laughs> and they should. So the underrated part uh, isn't meant to be a negative in any mm -hmm. way. As a matter of fact, it's meant to be a positive. It is a positive, you know, yeah, and, for sure. And um, I think that uh, the more people that go and explore um, Vietnam, um, I mean, we know that if you're from New Zealand or Australia, mm -hmm. Vietnam's on your radar. You love it, you go there. Um, but where we're from, Vietnam's on anybody's radar. No, no, I mean, it's never been, I mean, I may have, I don't know. <laughs> I've heard it a few times of people yeah. I want to go to Vietnam. So, uh, you know, I just think that it is some place that people should consider more. Uh, and, you know, even if it's a place you don't want to commit to for, say, your entire vacation, say you're flying over and you are doing Thailand, uh, it's a very quick flight over yeah. to just hop into Vietnam and just explore it for even a week or whatever and just get a little taste of it and see what you think. So that way you're not fully committing maybe to right. just going to that well, area. You can, you can fly right into Da Nang, mm -hmm. one of my top places yes. so far. So, yeah. so Vietnam is the top of our underrated list. Yes. Now our second underrated location. Uh, this one just immediately blew us away. As soon as we got there, we didn't have expectations and that is Romania. Yeah, well, yeah. the reason why we went, we went to Romania in the first mm -hmm. place was because we had to get out of the Schengen. Mm -hmm. So uh, we spent our 90 days all in Spain, all in the Schengen. We had to get out. Yeah. And we had to get out. We also had to go somewhere that would allow us to come in uh, during COVID. Right. And it happened to be Romania. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we ended up. And we spent uh, two months. A little over two months traveling through yeah. Romania. And um, yeah, we and we went to, I think, nine different mm -hmm. cities or something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So we moved around pretty quick, which isn't our typical style. But we saw we felt like we saw a lot of Romania. Oh. And we were excited to go back. And unfortunately, they just recently did enter the Schengen. So yeah. it's not one of those places that you get to exit out and then hop over to there. So, uh, but, you know... 
there is just so many amazing things that you can say about Romania. You, the people were so incredibly welcoming. Uh, they love their country. They want you to love their country. Yeah, yeah. The food was I, wonderful. I gained a few pounds. I gained a few yeah. pounds in Romania. <laughs> Those were your Balkans. Those were my Balkans. <laughs> the start of the Balkans for me. The, the food was the great. Balkan pounds. Real meat and potato. Very you heavy, uh, which was interesting because we were going there in the summertime. And yeah. I, I remember looking at some of their popular dishes and I'm thinking, ah, how appetizing is this going to be Very in 90, appetizing. 90 degree weather? It didn't bother us at all. No, to be eating we ate that. it all. And we loved it, and we, we also drank the beer, which was they had inexpensive wonderful. and great beer. Yeah. Um, well, in our first experience with the beer, is you know we got into uh, into Bucharest, Bucharest mm -hmm. and you know we've gone to so many different areas, and people always say, oh, there, check out this place. They have craft beer. And you go there and you try it. And we're usually a little disappointed. We can be a little bit maybe considered beer snobs. Yeah, a little bit of a beer snob. We come from yeah. an area where we, we are lucky to have such amazing beer. Uh, but boy, we, we got to the place and we tried it and we were like, oh my hey, God, this, this is, is a pretty a, good beer. This is a yeah. great beer and we yeah. were going to be there for two and a half more months. So we're excited for that. Um, the transportation isn't the best. Uh, yeah. there, that's a work in progress, so hopefully they, they get that up and going a little bit different. Well, now that they're in the Schengen, maybe they will. Maybe they will, yeah. 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 No, the transportation was a, was a little bit lacking, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't uh, keep us from getting to where we needed to go. No, we got around you know, fine. We got around fine eventually, and Brajov is still one of our top of five top destinations ones. that we love going. Uh, we, we love to go to. Mm -hmm. um, we just feel like um, more people should go to Romania than are going to Romania. Yeah, you know, um, so that comment that we got from our host, or actually we heard that from a couple people, the girl that we talked, is that mm -hmm. it was, it's set up for tourism without the tourists. And I would say that's very much true. Yeah. It's not a place that you go to that you, in the because we were there in the middle of summer. Right. And it wasn't one of those places that we were like, oh my God, it's so, so busy. So many it's people. Overwhelming. Are, right. It there wasn't were, sure, there were people, mm -hmm. but not crazy. Yeah. Another thing I like to bring up about Romania and Vietnam for that matter, um, they're both safe. Mm -hmm. They're both safe countries. Yeah. Um, Very you much you so. think of these, these countries, Romania, you know, what mm -hmm. is it? Where is it? Some people yeah, haven't asked us, where's Romania? Well, mm -hmm. it's in Eastern Europe. And it's very safe. It's very safe. And I would say that any of these places that we're listing today that we felt safe and then, and then also yeah. good for solo travel yeah. if you were looking to solo travel. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you have not considered putting Romania on your list, uh, we feel it is very much underrated and it should be on everybody's radar. Next up, and this is one of our favorite countries, and it didn't shock us that it's our favorite country. Um, but I think we were, were a little surprised mm -hmm. that it moved up our ranks so fast, um, and that's Turkey. Mm -hmm. A Turkey, um, every place we went in Turkey, from Istanbul to Cappadocia, Antalya, and Fedia, mm -hmm. um, we really, really enjoyed. We put all of those cities on the top of our list, and each one of those cities we went to next knocked the last one yeah. down a little bit <laughs> yeah. is how much we liked it. Well, and, and I would say that, you know, when we were originally going to Turkey, we went with the idea that, um, sure, we want to see Turkey. But I don't think at that time we at all had any expectation. I know I didn't have no. any expectation that it would rank high on my list. Right. I just knew that it was a country that I wanted to visit. Like, there are so many of those countries. Um, but then as soon as we got to Istanbul, it was like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And, you know, and like Brian was saying, each one that we'd been went to then bumped the other one off of right. the list because we loved it even more. So uh, it very quickly went to the top of our list or up there and um but i would say that there are so many things that just make it there i mean it's beautiful well the climate yeah the it's climate beautiful. it's a place that you can go in those winter months say the winter our winter mm -hmm. and even though it's still going to be a little bit on the cooler side it's not cold it's not cold yeah they got the mountains which mm -hmm. you like they have the water which i like right so it had everything going for it mm -hmm. um the people were friendly the food was great mm -hmm. it's just it's just one of those things it's it's a little bit um, out of the ordinary, exotic, mm -hmm. and we we just uh, we had a great time. And affordable. Yeah. Uh, and another bonus point of Turkey is it is out of the Schengen. So any of those people that are looking for those places to go that are out of Schengen, it should be one of the top places that you're heading to. I would right. suggest. And and you can fly anywhere mm -hmm. within the Schengen straight to Istanbul, mm -hmm. and most places will fly you to Antalya. 
Right. So well, and you can fly direct flight. to Antalya because we took a flight from Rome to Antalya. Right. And then we took a yeah. flight uh, um, um, from Dublin. Now, we know Dublin, Dublin is not too, in the right. Schengen, but, mm -hmm. but we can fly straight into So they've got places you can fly straight into right. to get out of Schengen, mm -hmm. which makes it just that much easier. That much easier, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Turkey, another place, add it to your list. Now, the next one is the only place we've gone to a second time. Mm -hmm. Third we, time for me. Yeah. Third time for you, <laughs> second time for me. We vacationed there together. We loved it. Mm -hmm. We got into our travels and we started moving around. Um, uh, some turmoil started up in a region of the world that we were going to go to. Mm -hmm. So we had to about face and we chose to go back for the second time mm -hmm. to Portugal. And Portugal is on a lot of people's radars. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be on more people's mm -hmm. radars, especially again, if you're from the United States, Canada, you got to get to Portugal. Yeah, I think there's a lot more people now that we've recently like, oh yeah, I should add yeah. Portugal to the list, but it hasn't made it to their list yet. You know, it's just kind of like, ah, I will. But then there's people, because we have some friends that just recently did a trip to Portugal and we were so excited to hear their views because they were doing Portugal and then they were heading into Spain. Okay, right. well, we've all heard of Spain. so. We were curious what they were going to think of Portugal, and they said they absolutely fell in love with it. Right. And so, yep. and that's that was our feeling. Yep. I mean, that was absolutely our feeling. And uh, I think that people just people have this intended this tendency to you have those main touristy spots, and say you're doing a vacation, you know, you want to go someplace you're going to like or that everybody has gone to, and then right. whatever. I just think that you need to broaden those horizons a little bit wider and then look at some of these places that are a little bit maybe off the beaten path. They're yeah. not seen as the top touristy place to right. go to. Um, you won't be sorry. They're there underrated. Is, right. Yeah. They are underrated. Yeah. And this one definitely fits in that category. Now in Portugal, the cool thing is, is that you can really go from such variations of what you're looking for. You've got the Algarve, which is your beaches that are absolutely incredible. Right. You've got... Lisbon, which has you in the bigger the bigger city and has everything right around you, incredible day trips. And then we right. loved Porto. Yeah, we love Porto. And, and let's rewind back to Lisbon for just a second. They got beaches too. Mm -hmm. And you can get out to those beaches oh, that's right. without a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. But but you know the Algarve is is, is where the beaches are at, at yeah. right? Um, Porto. Um, God, you go out to wine country, um, you, you drink the port. You sit there in a patio mm -hmm. and have some charcuterie. It is fantastic. We it had a is. great time. Yeah, we loved we loved all of our visits to Portugal and uh, very much can't wait to go back and explore more because when we explored the upper areas, it was on uh, vacation mode. And yeah. so we were kind of cruising through quicker. The only place we've spent extended period of time at this point is Algarve, but yeah. we do want to get back to that upper area. Okay, now let's get into the overrated destinations and this is where it's going to be controversial this is where uh, our youtube people are going to um leave us <laughs> nasty messages not really and tell no. us we're wrong <laughs> and you know everything else um but for us they were overrated mm -hmm. to us and we only have a couple on this list yes. there's really only two so there's there's only two mm -hmm. um but we feel pretty strongly about it we you know do. and it's not that we didn't enjoy our time there mm -hmm. because one of them in particular we we spent a lot of time there and we very much enjoyed it mm -hmm. there were just a lot of things that started adding up that when we started looking at our other travels and other places that we had been we thought well i kind of like that place better right or why does everybody come here mm -hmm. now we get it and if you haven't been to this first one on the list mm -hmm. you should go there but just remember this podcast, we said <laughs> it's overrated. And for us, it was Italy. Mm. Italy was a bit overrated for me. Um, I just found a lot of things that didn't check my boxes. Yeah. Now, Italy for us, uh, and that may sound and be so shocking to some people, yes. but I will tell you, we did talk to numerous different people about our views on Italy or how we kind of felt, and they felt very much the same. Yes. We are not saying that all of Italy is overrated. Um, we are just saying that when people plan a vacation and they immediately go, well, where am I going to go in Italy or go in Europe? And they immediately, oh, I want to go to Italy, Italy. because right. it's just so well known and they want to see it. We get that. 
but there are so many other places that you can go that we felt delivered a lot more. Like a, where they just checked so many more boxes. A bigger bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking um, money or financial. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about experience. Mm -hmm. And the food is great. Yeah. The wine is obviously good. Mm -hmm. Tuscany is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The beaches are amazing. Um, gosh, you can find that in a lot of places. Right. But then with those other places, you can also find a lot more, we felt, beauty as far as cleaner, more pristine, uh, the, st the buildings. Right. Uh, and the infrastructure. Stuff. Yeah. Right. The infrastructure, we felt like that was very much lacking for a place that so many people travel to. Um, we were challenged quite a bit with the, the trains and stuff in that area. Um, and, and like we said, we're not at all trying to say don't go to Italy, but just go in. One thing we always say is don't set your expectations so high. Right. And that could have probably been big fault on our part. We did spend two and a half months in Italy this last summer um, we probably had our expectations set well, very high for certain areas and then yeah. kind of had them slam down a bit. yeah I think that's exactly what it is we set our expectations so high that when we got there um, we were a little bit let down mm -hmm. and that's why it's on our overrated list mm -hmm. we overrated it and I think a lot of other people do as well mm -hmm. now that's just our thoughts yeah other people might go to Italy with these high expectations and they nailed it. Well, you know what? Had those same people been to Romania, mm -hmm. been to Vietnam, been to Portugal, been to these other fantastic countries mm -hmm. that have a lot going for them that are underrated. Right. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one way to maybe avoid some of that feeling of, um, having it be overrated is maybe instead of immediately thinking that you need to centralize yourself in some of the bigger cities, the most popular towns, find some of those off the beaten path, little village towns and stay in those yeah. and then get to the other areas. And then, cause when we did go to those areas, we found those felt a little more authentic. They felt, um, a little more like Italy to us, I guess, um, but where we got into the big cities. I don't care what time of year you go, it's busy, it's crowded, you're in lines every place yeah. that you're going to see something. And for us, that just doesn't feel much like a relaxing experience. So, right. Yeah. No, I, I think some of those villages in, uh, in, in um, Tuscany, Tuscany mm -hmm. that we went to, thank you, I couldn't think of the word <laughs> Tuscany, um, we were blown away. Yeah. And, and that was and, a beautiful area. And, and it was area. something that met our expectations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tropia, another one, met our expectations. And Puglia. And Puglia, small mm -hmm. beach towns. Um, so there are things that we were blown away by. Right. But when you ask 10 people where they want to go on vacation anywhere in the world, five, six, seven, eight of them are going to say Italy. And I think it's just because so many people, that's just the place to go. Right. So, yeah, I mean... We're just putting it out there for We're just going to put it out there. <laughs> now, we're going we're to move on to the second one. Yeah, so our next one that we have that we had so many people tell us, uh, you really want to go here, and this is taking us back over to Southeast Asia, um, that you really want to go to this area, that they loved it. And so once again, we set our expectations probably way beyond where they yeah. needed to be. Um, and that is Malaysia. Now, <laughs> Malaysia for us, we're not once again saying that we disliked it. It really, in comparison to Italy, it just didn't check hardly any boxes for us. Uh, we first started our travels in a place that, I mean, the Airbnb ended up being just horrible. We lasted one day and had to get a refund from Airbnb for it. Um, and so had to yeah. move on. So it wasn't a good start. We, to we had a bad start. Mm -hmm. and we also had... Um, unsufferable weather, mm -hmm. the, the weather conditions, the heat and the humidity. Um, so that subtracted from our experience uh, right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Now, um, again, we had other vacationers, other uh, YouTubers actually mm -hmm. tell us that, you know, Malaysia's just, you've got to go to Malaysia. So we went and um, I, I, I think part of the problem also was we'd already been um, to Thailand and to Vietnam. We had a, we had pretty well that goes into the whole expectation right. thing. I think that that's we were expecting we were expecting that um, and I think it also one of the things that immediately got us is Malaysia being Southeast Asia is not an inexpensive country and so we were 
kind of expecting a little bit more of that uh, and even like yeah. eating out and the beers were ridiculous which we get because that's just yeah. their their religion and beliefs but um so all of those things that check boxes for us but i would say that even Kuala Lumpur, which is where we spent the most time, we just really, so the downtown area of Kuala Lumpur where the Twin Towers are mm -hmm. and they've got um, that beautiful park area yeah. and the mall and stuff. But outside of that, we really struggled to we, we, find we anything. You know, yeah. I've even had people just even recently, hey, we're here right now. Where would you suggest going? And I struggled to even tell them where to go. Yeah. Um, there weren't really day trips you wanted to do from there. There, um, there was just a lot lacking. Uh, thank goodness we had a great view from our Airbnb that we were in. Yeah. We had a pool. We had some friends there that were also there at the same time, so that helped uh, the time go by a little bit quicker for us. But that's not how it should be. You shouldn't be like, I can't, right. I'm looking forward to this time being done. Right. Yeah. We, well, you know, and, and again, we're gonna get some. We're gonna get some pushback on yeah. this. Because okay. we know a lot of people love it. But we know a lot of people love it. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know people that, that didn't and have the mm -hmm. same opinion. That, that we do, and it's not that we didn't like it, it's not that it's not a cool place, we just think, because our expectations were so high, mm -hmm. that it's overrated. Yeah, and and we will just once again, like let you know, these are our opinions. These are <laughs> these our are, opinions. And, but there are opinions from our experience in all these places we were in for over a month, a yes. month if not more. Right. So uh, these, it's not just a one week vacation in, right. in our opinion. We, we get a lot, well you need to do more research mm -hmm. on that area. Well we spent two and a half months there, mm -hmm. so <laughs> this is just our opinion. <laughs> that was our research. Yes. Okay, now what about those countries that we all know of that meet your expectations? They're not necessarily overrated, they're not necessarily underrated, but they're just countries that you know what you're going to get, mm. you get there, and that's what you got. And that's what you get, which yeah. isn't a bad thing. That's, that's actually a, good thing. a really that's good thing. That's a good thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. So our first place that we would say that about was Spain, and that's yeah. where we went, and that was good that that was the case because right. this is the place we went our first stop, our first three months of travel was in Spain, and it was exactly what we expected. Um, it was beautiful, the food was great, the transportation was really, really good. Yep. Um, the people, uh, not the friendliest, you know, but that was okay. Again, everybody in the world goes to Spain. Mm. The, the locals probably get tired of it, yeah. you know, and I get that. I'll tell you this though, Spain was uh, well, I, I, I could think of two countries off the top of my head that were so incredibly clean. Mm -hmm. The streets, the garbage situation, the, the trains, everything was impeccable. Mm -hmm. And I thought Spain um, nailed that. And, yeah. and we had a great time. We need to go back to Spain. We, we need to do get need down to go south. Back. We need to get down to Malaga. So we went uh, just recently. We went on a repositioning cruise, and um, and that was one of the days that was a nice day. Was yeah. we were in Cadiz, uh, Spain. Yes. And so we did get to get into that southern area of Spain. And once again, I remember we walked in there. And we right away were like, oh my God, it's absolutely gorgeous. It we need to get back here yeah. because it's been two, over two years since we've been there. Yeah. So yeah, we do need to make our way back to Spain and uh, explore more of that area in the southern area. Well, I'd like to get north too. Mm -hmm. And you know? the northern area, yeah. So, so there's a lot to see in Spain. Mm -hmm. Let's not even start talking about the wine because the, the, that, that, that'll be a whole different video altogether, <laughs> a different podcast was the wine in itself. So we had a great time in Spain. Spain is exactly what you think it's going to be mm -hmm. and it's great. Now, what about Thailand? Thailand was exactly what we expected. Yes. I mean, we expected, I would say, you know, we had these anticipation. The one area that was different than expected was maybe we expected it to be more overwhelming than it was as yeah. far as uh, the busy chaos and all of that. We didn't really find that that was the case. No. Um, but it was everything you expected. The food is amazing. The costs are, are low. Um, the people were very kind. The yeah. beaches are really nice. It was everything and, and, that we kind of envisioned. It was everything you thought it would mm -hmm. be um, the differences in the food from the north to the south um, I like pad thai mm -hmm. I have more pad thai I never got tired of it no surprisingly yeah. you got that I mean there would be stretches of time like days because you eat almost 
pretty much almost every meal out because it's a lot cheaper right. to eat out than it is to cook in. Plus they just don't have the grocery store. So that, that part would probably classify as a downside for some people, but um, they, the eating out was so, I mean, yeah. you were paying like a dollar fifty, two dollars yeah. for a meal. So yeah. hard to beat that. Uh, but yeah, it just checked all those boxes that we expected it to check. Yeah, it was exactly what we thought it would mm -hmm. be. Now, there's something to be said for going to a country and you have these visions in your head of what it's going to be like and then you see it. Mm -hmm. That's what we got in Spain. That's what we got in Thailand. And then we get to Croatia. Mm -hmm. And Croatia with the crystal blue water. Um, you know, Carrie doesn't like to get into the, uh, the cold ocean yeah. at all. To me, it was a perfect temperature. Yeah, he finds it refreshing. It's he refreshing. always says that. Like, my feet are in the water, and he goes, it's so refreshing. It's so refreshing. And I'm like, it's refreshing on my feet. That's yes. about the end point of it's it. It's refreshing. I'm not going any deeper than that. But Croatia was. It was Croatia is beautiful. Um, the, you know, we, we didn't spend as much time traveling through as we would like to. We have visited Dubrovnik. We've also d visited uh, Split for, we were in Split for two months. Two months in Split, Went yep. out to Havar, went mm -hmm. to Trajir. Yep. Um, and so, you know, from what we experienced in Croatia, we very much loved it. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, the beaches are great. The getting, water is pretty. I think um, on, on our places in the world to go, they're, they're stacking up. We have a long list mm -hmm. and we're going to get to them all eventually. Now, one thing that we always say we're going to do, but then we always think of that place we haven't been to yet, where we want to go to first. Mm -hmm. Well, Croatia might be a country we go back to a second time mm. because we spent two months in Split and we got to a couple other nearby towns, but we really didn't get to experience Croatia the way that we wanted to. We didn't get to Zagreb. Mm -hmm. We didn't get through all the islands. I'd love to take a cruise. Yeah, in Croatia, they have these cruises that we originally looked at doing pre-travel, like we were going to do it as a vacation right. and we decided to travel full-time instead. Uh, but they are like a seven day long cruise. They have maybe 22 people on board, they 12 rooms. But the cool, what was appealing to us was, is that you're on the ship or on the boat during the daytime. So they serve you breakfast and lunch, but then you are in port and because it's a small boat, they bring you right into the main port. So it's right. not like the cruise ship where yeah, you're way You're in out. town, you're in town, yeah. yeah. And then they stay overnight in that town. So you can sleep on the boat or if you wanted to get a hotel room, your choice. Um, but you get to enjoy those towns later in the day when like cruise ship traffic is left or right. the tourist traffic is left. Uh, and you get to kind of go and have dinner yeah. you out. Get to and, you get to experience yeah. the, the nightlife mm -hmm. of whatever that, that place has to offer. Yeah. Um, and then go back to the boat, spend the night on the boat, get a room. It's your choice. But yeah. uh, for me... There's nothing like spending the night on a boat. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and to me, the rooms were really nice, so it yeah. wasn't like you were <laughs> you were roughing it. But yeah, that was one of the ways that we want to go back and yeah. see Croatia. But yeah, very much what we expected. Um, just a beautiful area, and it's Croatia. And it's Croatia, and you know, right in the same part of the mm -hmm. world um, where we've been to once before about two years ago, mm -hmm. and we are back now for a second round is Greece. Now, when I say we're not going back to the same countries twice, well, we're on completely different islands this mm -hmm. time. And so the experience will be relatively the same. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, Greece, mm -hmm. um, it, you, you think you're going to get one thing, and that's exactly what you get. You do. You get the incredible turquoise water. Yeah. Water. You get um, the great food. Very friendly people. Um, they go out of their way to help you. So <laughs> we're. We're walking down the street looking at our phones or mapping our phones and somebody comes out of nowhere. Uh, where do you guys need to go? What are you looking for? And, and she helped us out. She did, you know, yeah. The car stopped for you when you go to cross the street. Mm -hmm. We didn't get that in Germany. I almost no. got ran over in Germany a couple times. No, or in Italy. They will actually like <laughs> they get mad at you if you cross in front of them. So yeah, it is. Um, it has been absolutely wonderful. And our month that we spend in San Torini, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we very much love that time. And it was exactly what we expected. Yeah. It's San Torini. It's beautiful. The white buildings. It's uh, paradise. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is. So you're getting what you expect out of those areas. Now, coming up later in the year, uh, we are heading to Mexico. Yes. So we're going to be spending our fall in Mexico for three months. Uh, and we're hoping that those areas at least meet expectations. Well, I think they, <laughs> so we've both been to Mexico um, on the coast. We're going to mm -hmm. spend this, this round, we're going to spend um, in central Mexico, mm -hmm. inland. 
Um, Some place neither one of us have been. That yeah. We haven't been mm -hmm. to. And I think it's going to fall into that category of met expectations. Yes. I don't think it's going to be overrated. I don't think it's going to be underrated. Mm -hmm. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to set myself up for disappointment no. like I did in Italy. Now, I believe the food at the street carts, the street food, is going to be tacos, which I love, burritos, mm -hmm. which I love. It's going to fit right <laughs> up my alley. Mexican I'm going to love... <laughs> Love Guacamole. Mexico. Now, I just said how much I'm going to love it. Yeah. I'm not setting my expectations too I high. I think that our expectations on the food is set really high just yeah. because we have been wanting to travel there for so long and and really explore the area. Right. But part of that comes with we are super excited for the food. About so, the food. Because no place that we have traveled yet has Mexican food. Tacos. You know, I mean, it's like it's nothing that yeah. we just want Mexican food. Street tacos. So, and I have yeah. been to Mexico and I have had street tacos. And they are delicious. Yeah. So that's why my expectations are so mm -hmm. high is because I've already done it yeah. and I cannot wait. Right. So, well, we hope you enjoyed this and uh, we hope we didn't offend anybody oh, with our, our underrated or we overrated We definitely areas. offended somebody. We hope that you look at our underrated areas and maybe just check them out a little bit closer and maybe add them to your next vacation list. Yes. If you would like to find us on other platforms, you can find us on our social media, at on Instagram, Facebook, and of course on YouTube. YouTube at Brian and Carrie, and then also on our website at Brian and Carrie We will catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.